New Jersey public interest lawyers Carl Mayer and Bruce Afrin have issued subpoenas to the White House, the NSA, and telecommunications giant Verizon for documents showing whether the Bush administration approved a secret program to examine phone records of millions of Americans. Mayer and Afrin are representing more than two dozen people who have sued Verizon, AT&T, and Bell South, claiming the companies violated privacy laws by turning over phone records to the National Security Agency. They join us now in the studio. Welcome. Bruce, what have you done here with this? We have subpoenaed the Bush administration, the White House, the National Security Agency, and Verizon for the documents that will identify the NSA phone record spy program that's the subject of a major lawsuit that Carl Mayer and I filed in June. These documents represent the first time that the government has been subpoenaed in these cases and we think this will open a major, major legal battle between ourselves and our other co-counsel and the government uh, in a fight as to whether the people of this country will learn the truth about their government's actions or whether the government will be able to stonewall the courts. These subpoenas that we're announcing today seek the documents that will show the NSA's spy program. Who made the decision? Was it the president or was it the vice president? And, and who's really in control of the government? We want to know whether the government had begun these plans before 9-11 and whether 9-11 and terrorism are simply an excuse to survey and monitor the phone records and the phone conversations of Americans. Carl, what can you add to what Bruce has just said? Due to some investigative reporting that came out in May, we filed a lawsuit uh, seeking to represent hundreds of millions of Americans who've had their phone records illegally and unconstitutionally turned over to the NSA, which is the National Security Agency, and the Bush administration, who claim that they need these phone records and calling records to fight terrorism. We don't buy that at all. We think that uh, not only is it illegal and unconstitutional, but it's not a very good or effective weapon to fight terrorism. So our lawsuit seeks to stop this unprecedented invasion of Americans' privacy. You can't have a, a nation of 300 million people be put under suspicion by the Bush administration. That's exactly what our Constitution was drafted to prevent. The Fourth Amendment to the Constitution was drafted by the framers because they knew that the British under King George were going to the homes of Americans, kicking down the doors, and rifling through people's papers. That was a violation of their privacy. It was an unreasonable search and seizure. Fast forward to today, and you have another would-be King George who wants to violate our privacy rights, not by kicking down our doors, but by monitoring our phone calls anywhere in the country. And it doesn't matter whether you're Granny Smith in Des Moines or Grandpa Jones in in uh, Houston, Texas, they, are, they have the ability now to look at your phone records. They can see whether you're calling your clergy person, you can see whether you're calling your psychiatrist, your lawyer. It is the, va the most vast intrusion on Americans' privacy rights and civil liberties in the history of the country. Domestic surveillance has become more acceptable, being justified as a tool in the war on terror in a post-9-11 world. You make the case, however, that this began before 9-11? We've uncovered in the, the, the course of this lawsuit that the Bush administration was even prior to 9-11 trying to obtain the phone records of 300 million Americans, which completely undercuts their argument that this was made necessary by the attacks of 9-11. So what we did today was we dropped the subpoena on the White House to try to force them to cough up the truth about what they're doing here in this program. Bruce, uh, what's wrong with this program? People are used to a little government intrusion for their own security. It violates the basic right of privacy of Americans. But it also means that we have lawless government. We have an administration that doesn't obey the law. Congress has passed the statute, the Electronic Communications Privacy Act, which says that no government entity may be given telephone subscriber information without a warrant or a subpoena. The president is simply violating that statute in the name, he says, of national security. The president's duty is to enforce the law. Congress makes our laws. When the president not only violates the law, 
but creates his own rules, what we have is unconstitutional government and lawless government. So we are seeing a major constitutional crisis in which the president and the vice president have given themselves the right not only to disregard the law that Congress, the representatives of the people, has passed, but to create their own rules, to write their own laws. And they oppose these court cases in the name of national security and state secrets, as if Americans have no right to challenge violations of their right to privacy. Well, even a Republican judicial appointee, Judge Vaughn Walker in San Francisco last, earlier this month, ruled against the government on state secrets, saying the government can't block lawsuits about illegal wiretapping simply by claiming state secrets. Never before have we seen a violation of civil liberties on this type of scale. Even President Nixon limited his illegal wiretaps to people they suspected of being so-called radicals. Here the administration is seeking to tap and find the phone records of tens of millions of people against whom it has no reason to believe they've ever committed any wrong. Never before has a president violated the basic rights of Americans in this way. That's what these lawsuits are about. That's what this subpoena is about. To make the president come clean with the people and to stop stonewalling the judicial process.